the BDB. <laughs> okay, this guy, it's a new espresso machine that I've got. It's called the Breville Dual Boiler, also called the BDB. <laughs> Maybe that's why I got it. But anyways, I finally upgraded my espresso machine. And this is like after five years of using a Breville infuser, which let's call it the little little guy of this guy. You know, I felt like I needed to start tinkering around a little bit more with my coffee and especially like getting into temperature uh, experimentation. And plus I was getting, getting bored. And so we got the BDB. Ooh. I'm biased, so this is not going to be a review. But I did an unboxing, we can walk through that. But really, I want to talk about seven quirks of the BDB since the month that I've had it. So from an unboxing point of view, it comes in this nice big box, fancy stuff on the outside, lovely latte art. You know, you got a whole bunch of accessories on the top and finally when you open it up, so apart from the machine, you get a single wall filter and a dual wall filter, weird. You also get a tamper which kind of goes into the machine. You get a porter filter, nice hefty 58 millimeter porter filter. You get um, a jug, which I kind of find inferior. I, in fact, use another jug for my milk frothing. Of course, a quick start guide and then the final, the manual, the whole thing. And you get this like razor thing for dozing. Eh. And you get some more pieces to help with cleaning. You get these cleaning tablets that you'll use for, um, you know, a back flush. And then you get a nice descaling uh, packet as well. And then you get a water filter that goes within the water thing. And finally, you get a water hardness testing strip. Um, in fact, I really liked the whole testing my hardness of my water process. Um, you know, you get this strip, you dip it in your water for a minute, you see the number of squares that turn red, and then you input that information to this machine when the first time you start up. And actually, that's pretty much it from an unboxing point of view. You remove all the stickers, you fill up the water, you put your uh, you know, water filter, you test your hardness, you set the setting, and you're ready to go. Pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, wait, so now let's talk about the seven quirks that I find in this machine since I've been using it. Okay, quirk number one, it takes seven minutes to warm up. That's it. <laughs> Like compared to many of its competitors in the dual boiler categories, you know, they take like 30 minutes to warm up. Um, now that matters to me because I might be you know, in a meeting or something, running down, making a coffee. I want it to be quick. And of course I'm in US with a 110 volt version. Apparently the 220 volt version warms up even faster. That is really cool. And it's not only just heating up the water in the two boilers, but also this group head, it's called a saturated group head. So it's warming the entire system up. All of this is amazing. And I'm really interesting to see the market kind of realize the importance of starting up faster. Like the new La Marzocco Linea Micra takes four minutes to start up. That's insane. Um, even better is that you can program when to start this machine. So my machine wakes up at 6.45 nice and warm by 7 a.m. when I need to make my coffee. Okay, second quirk is the custom porter filter. Now this is a 58 mm porter filter. So the good is that it's a fairly universal size. So tampers, distributors, and the whole ecosystem of accessories is pretty wide and pretty cheap for 58 mm. Like unlike what I had before with the Breville Infuser or even like the Breville Barista Express, that's a 54 mm porter filter. It's unique, specific to Breville, et cetera, et cetera. The bad is that it is still a custom porter filter. Like apparently the two notches on the side of the porter filter is unique to Breville. So you can't really swap out porter filters of any other brand. Um, but otherwise, accessories work. The other bad in a way, is that 58 mm is less forgiving in your coffee. Like you have to have good puck prep. Now think about it, right? If you have 18 grams of ground coffee in a 54 mm porter filter, it's going to be a taller bed versus 58 mm, it's going to be a shorter bed. And so that means there's less distance. You have to be more accurate in your distribution so that you don't have channeling. Basically, you have to really work hard or harder 
to get good coffee out of this. And I remember my first few espressos were disaster. It's just, it was really bad. I have to do a lot of WDT. I have to make sure my distribution is fine. I have to make sure it's level on the top. Lots need to happen for a good 58 mm porta filter coffee. Third quirk are these buttons out here. Manual, single, double. Hmm. Single and double, I, you know, run for 30 seconds. You can also configure the time duration. You can even configure it to run by water volume. That's in. But the reality is both of those are imperfect. Uh, what you really want to control is the flow control or or like the weight of the espresso that comes out. Um, and that's what I do. I have a scale, my espresso pours out, I'm looking for 36 grams out from an 18 grams in, in a duration of around 30 seconds. So I press the manual button, it pre-infuses, starts extracting, until I press the manual button off, it keeps on running, which is really good. That's what I want. But it's interesting because they've given me a manual option to give me the control that I need, but there's also a single and a double for someone who just, you know what, doesn't want to get too deep into it. And that's the interesting part, like of this machine. At this price range, I expect it to be a prosumer device, but they've got double wall filters, they've got these single and double buttons. It almost feels like they're trying to solve for someone who's not too much into coffee, just wants to spend big, as well as someone who's like me, who wants to tweak and give me the control to tweak it. Uh, Interesting. Fourth quirk is pre-infusion. Now, you'll argue that's not a quirk. It's something that we now use in almost every machine. Um, of course, pre-infusion is giving some water at low pressure, just wetting the puck before the real nine bar of water comes in and extracts the espresso out of the coffee. Um, by default, configured to five seconds, but the quirk is you can configure this from zero to 99 seconds. What? <laughs> like, I love that I can play around with the pre-infusion time, but with an ability to go almost up to 99 seconds, it's like you can create a low pressure, long duration extraction, something like a turbo shot. Hmm. And the fifth quirk is temperature. Now this is the one quirk that I really got this machine for. So. Rewind back in time, there's a James Hoffman video about temperature and how that affects the flavors that come out of your espresso for the same coffee bean and the same weight uh, in and out. Blew my mind. In fact, like that's probably the reason that I wanted to get into experimenting more with my coffee is with temperature. Now, it's ridiculously simple to just change the temperature on this machine. It's really hard in just about every other competing device. Like they have a scroll wheel in behind, they have uh, some screws to adjust inside the machine just to adjust the temperature. And this is something you'll adjust with each and every coffee bean that you try. I love it. Now I'm gonna make another video about it, but that's what I'm really experimenting with and I just love it. The sixth quirk is steaming. Actually, the more that I think about it, these are not quirks. But anyways, let's talk about steaming. This guy, dual boiler, that means I can steam and extract espresso at the same time. It has a three-hole steam wand, but it's not, you know, the newer ones that are free to touch or something. I don't know what it's called. So you can burn your hand with this guy. That's a disappointing part. The other thing is, it's kind of powerful. It takes around 20 seconds to froth my milk versus almost a minute and a minute and a half to froth my milk with my previous machine. And I think it's making my latte art slightly better. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The quirk is that you can configure the steam temperature, like across a range. Why? I don't know. It's way above my head, but that's the quirk, isn't it? Okay, the last quirk, and I saved the best for the last, is that you can tinker with this machine. Now just rewind back in time. This guy came out like 12 years ago. Um, when we had a very different understanding of espresso. It was literally a different world. Since then, the Decent came out, blew everyone's minds, um, and helped people understand a little bit more about extraction. Um, but this guy has kept up with the times because it's very easy to tweak and modify the machine. So there are things like the Slayer mod, which allow flow control, 
um, from the espresso. Whatever. I'm going to do a bunch of those, but I think that's what I find exciting because it's almost a future proof machine that is super capable. I'm excited to tinker with it. It's been a month. I'm still questioning if I should break my warranty, but I'm sure I'll get there soon enough. <laughs> All right. Those were the seven quirks of a Breville dual boiler, the BBB. Mm. Love the name. We'll see you all in the next one. Bye.